when I was in school, I had a thing for writing instruments. We all eagerly waited for the time when we will be shifting from pencils to pens. Unlike current times, uh, during my school time, we were not allowed to write with ball pens or gel pens. The school rules were strict enough to make us write with fountain pens only. Well, I was a big fan of fountain pens and I love collecting them. It's a sad thing uh, that uh, I lost few of them uh, when shifting uh, houses and other few uh, were stolen <laughs> at school. So let's uh, keep the sad story aside and let's get to the point. I still use fountain pens. Uh, my handwriting ain't too good but uh, I still write. I write songs, poems, uh, short stories uh, on paper before uh, typing them up on my personal computer. So, uh, how many of you still use fountain pens? For those who are still using fountain pens, this video is uh, about the review of a fountain pen that I have recently ordered on Flipkart. This is Bauer 507 8 Horses. Bauer is spelled in a weird way B A O E R. Uh, it's a Chinese manufacturer of inexpensive fountain pens uh, which can compete with the costly ones uh, in the current market. Well, I bought this from Flipkart at 320 rupees and a few of my friends got impressed after seeing this and they asked me to order for them too. So I got two more which uh, I got at 295 each. Uh, a bigger discount was going on. So they are more lucky than me, I guess. So I love the way this pen is built. It comes in a plastic sleeve and a velvet sleeve. Uh, there is no box with it. But 320 rupees, 295 rupees, it's worth it. Let's see how the pen is. Uh, let's go to uh, the body of the pen. This is a pull-off cap. The body is made of brass. And there are eight horses and Chinese writings engraved on the body of the pen. You probably can't see it now, but you'll get a closer shot later in the video. It's not a print, mind it. It's not a print. It's engraved on it and it's solid brass and this is not low quality brass, it's good, it's quite good, the finish is very good also. China really really can do well with the finishing work. The tail portion of the pen is metal and there's an anodized coating on it. The grip portion has got fine lines for grips. It's not a smooth plastic, it has got fine lines for grip. There are two gold colored, I don't think this is gold, so gold rings uh, just above the nib and one brass ring here at the threading. See the inner portion of the pen has a brass threading also. The inside of the barrel I don't know whether you're able to see, but the inside of the barrel has also got brass training. And they use an international size converter. It's a twist converter. Twist piston mechanism. And the quality is quite good. Then let's come to the nib. The feed, it has a feed, it has a normal feed. Uh, as we see in most pens, nothing special about that. The nib looks pretty good. It's a combination of uh, like steel and gold color plating on it. It has got the brand name written on it, Bauer. You will be able to see it later in the video. There's no other inscribing on it. The steel portion has got lines engraved on it. Uh, but there is a major issue with the nib. 
when this pain first came to me, the nib was very, very dry. And I, dry means dry like the desert. It was barely writing. Barely writing. But it was smooth. The nib was smooth. The alignment was okay. But it was just unwritable. So I immediately had to take out my pliers and my magnifying glass and fix the nib. First, many of you might not know how to do it, but there are many videos on the internet where um, it's shown how to increase the ink flow of a nib by using pliers. So what you do, you put a cloth on it for cushioning, then you take pliers, press the nib from both sides and squeeze out that little gap between the two twines. Just remember, you have to align the pin afterwards because the twines will go up, down, in either way when you try to squeeze it open with your pliers. After squeezing it open, the ink flow was coming but it was scratchy so I had to align the twines and then it started writing. It's a fairly good nib which was not adjusted by hand at the factory. So what I presume is uh, what this Bauer Chinese manufacturing company does is they just make the pens and they ship them out. They are not checked after they are manufactured. I can say that because this was my first pen. I have ordered two more pens for my friends after they got really impressed with these and these two were similarly dry as the desert and I had to repair both of the nibs and just both of them myself and then started to write. Now they are smooth but they were not. So Bauer if you are listening to me please please adjust the nib and ship them out because I have seen many reviews on Flipkart, Amazon where people have complained about the nib. They are specifically saying that it's very dry, it's breaking up, it's not writing, it's a waste of money. If the nib is not working, why buy a pen? Those who are listening to me, those who have uh, bought this pen and have been disappointed badly, take up a, pen, a pliers and a piece of cloth and a magnifying glass and try to adjust it yourself. Or take it to someone who can if you are not confident enough. The moment you adjust the pen's nib to the required ink flow, you will love this pen. For 320 rupees, 295 rupees for those, these two on a bigger discount. This pen, I think, what the money, what the value. So uh, let's uh, go down to the paper and see how they actually so this is the Bauer 507 8 horses and it's a steel nib and I would guess the size to be medium or size 6 that's my best guess or there is uh, as there is nothing written on the nib the ink that I'm using today is Parker Quink Black. I wouldn't say this to be the smoothest of the nibs, but it's doing a good job. Let's see how it performs through the test. Horizontal lines, vertical lines, right to left obliques, left to right obliques. Right to left is a little scratchy. You see it's breaking up here. Let's see how it does. It's quite fine. Uh, sometimes it breaks up if I try to ride uh, a little fast. Uh, it fails to keep up. It's more or less a dry flow. I would prefer a bit more wet. The lines are quite bold due to the size of the nib. You can clearly see here 
the ink is not uh, spreading out so it's dry it's very dry the lines are quite bold due to the size of the nib so the writing is uh, quite okay for me here but I would have liked this pen more if it had a better ink flow let's try reverse writing let me just twist the nib turn it around reverse writing it's coming out to be fine or extra fine between fine or extra fine but it's scratchy it's quite scratchy now, people don't like to write like that but it's a part of the test anyway so let's go through with it so it's extra fine oops uh, the other way around extra fine again you can always swap the nib with other international brands like Noodlers, Goulet, Edison, Twisby, Visconti and many more. They might be a little difficult to get here but they are of really good quality and standards. So let's check the other one. More or less the same. This one is more dry than the previous one. It's, uh, yeah, it's more dry. See no ink spread there. The ink that I'm using for this pen is Camlin Cocuo Black. I really don't like this ink because it blots a lot and it uh, has a lot of feathering too. So let's go back to the first pen. Now it's time to have the quote of the day. Uh, this line is from a very famous and a very favorite pen of mine. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thoughts by Percy Bysshe Shelley. So, this pen poster is a bit heavy at the back as it's quite a heavy pen. Let me just uh, refocus here. Uh, just a minute. Uh, there you go. I prefer my pens a little lighter at the back. See, I'm trying to balance it. This is the hold and position I use to write. It has a tendency of falling back. So I will suggest not to write uh, it posted, but I like uh, most pens in the posted positions more. Probably I'll use this pen unposted if I have to write a lot. Let's go to the stats now. When capped, this pen is approximately 137 millimeters long and when posted, it's approximately 166 millimeters long and it weighs a bit over 34 grams which makes it a decently heavy pen due to its brass body. The cap is not that heavy but still if I post it, it goes slightly off balance. I will not say that it's a well balanced pen but is very good judging by the price at which it comes for. I took a few photographs with the help of my DSLR so you can have a closer look at the intricate engraving on the brass body. The design of this pen is something which blew my mind. Even the Chinese alphabets are engraved so cleanly, you could probably read them if one knew the language. I would really appreciate if someone could tell me what these alphabets or words meant. Coming down to the big and final question, do I like this pen? Well, I have a mixed feeling about this. I love the build quality, the design, the engraving on good quality brass. The weight provides a feel-good factor when I write with it. The click lock of uh, the pull-off cap, the beautifully designed clip, although it's a bit rigid, but not too much to bother me. And finally, the price. It's absolutely inexpensive. Really a good bargain for the price it comes for. It will definitely add to your personality. My colleagues appreciated it a lot. But on the other hand, the quality of the nib fails to keep up with the rest of the pen as I showed you earlier. 
So that's it for today. This is Gaurav Shen signing off. Please subscribe, like, and share the video if you liked it. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Goodbye.